Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Adobe Photoshop video, we'll be using the channels to help us remove the background from a photo and give us a nice transparent background, thereby allowing us to change that background into something else. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you really want to learn how to use Adobe Photoshop, take a look at my complete training titles and you'll find a link for that in the upper right hand corner. Okay, let's get to it. Removing a background, changing a background by making a layer mask using channels is a favorite technique for a lot of Photoshop users. It also is an easy way to go if you have a nice white background. You've seen that I'm sure in a lot of different videos how to do that with a white background. Let's show you how to do that if you have an actual landscape in the background. Now the softer the landscape is, the easier this is going to be to do, and the more contrast you have between your foreground and your background, the easier it is as well. So this is a pretty good picture for doing this with. If I had a lot of detail back here, I'd use a different technique. But for this kind of an image, with a nice soft background, or if you're just in your sky background, whatever, this is a good technique. We'll start off here by making a copy of the background layer. Just right click, where it says background and duplicate layer and then just hide the original. I always do that just as a safety so I'm never working on my original image. I can always go back to that if I need to if I mess things up on this one. Again just a little safety right there. Okay now on this we're going to be taking a look at the channels right there. Here's our channels. It's an RGB image right now red, green, and blue. You can look for the channel that has the most separation between the foreground and the background. In this case, as you can see here, it's the blue channel. Now here's a little tip. If these aren't really working for you, you can convert to a different color format. Go over here to the image menu, come down to mode, and try CMYK color. And don't merge. There we are. Choose OK. CMYK might give you a better option for your particular picture. In this case it doesn't. None of these work any better than the RGB. Actually the RGB worked better for us. So we'll go back to that one. Mode and RGB and don't merge. There we go. Now where they CMYK might work out well for you is if you have CMYK colors predominant in your image. In this case the blue works out best for us. So there we go. Now to do this you want to accentuate the blue, the blue channel, darken the blue channel down, leaving the background lighter. I don't want to do that on the original channel, so let's make a copy of this channel. Right click where the name is and duplicate channel. Choose OK. Here's our duplication. Notice how just this is now selected, nothing else is selected. If you get something like that, just unselect the blue so you have just this one channel selected. OK, now we're going to be applying some adjustments on this. Go up to Image, Adjustments. My personal favorite is Level, so I'll use that one. And what we want to do is we want to accentuate the blacks by pulling the black control, to your left side control, over towards the right. Notice how the image gets darker, but if you look along the edge, what we care about, little fine hairs in here, little fine hairs around in here, those get a little bit darker, but they don't go away. Now if you go too far, right, right in here, so it begins to bunch up right there. So I've taken that too far. So what you want to do is you want to take it as dark as you can before it begins to block up in those inner areas. It looks for me like right around in here somewhere is pretty good. Now if you move the middle control, this changes your midtones. And notice how the background gets darker as well. So this is not going to be helping us at all. I can move the midtones to the left a little bit. But as I do that, then how I begin to lose in here. I begin to lose those fine hairs again. So let's just set this back to its original setting. I'll do a cancel on that. We'll go back to that nice clean here. So you want to stick with just the black side. Again, take it as far as you can before you begin to lose detail in those fine hairs. It looks like right around in here somewhere. Now this is going to give us just darker for most of it but it's not perfect yet. Her face is still here. There's still a lot of detail in the background, so we need to clean the mask up after this. A good amount of mask cleanup. When you're ready, just click on OK. There's our new 
layer here, our blue copy layer. Now I want to make a luminosity mask out of this. To do that, hold the control key down and click on the icon. That selects just the bright parts of the picture. I want the dark parts selected, so let's invert that. Select and inverse, there we go. Just the dark parts are now selected. I can now go back to RGB up here and then uncheck your copy layer there. So you have just the original RGB layers selected. Back to our layer control, there's the copy, and then just click on the layer mask button. There's our layer mask. Now notice how we're seeing through her face. That's because we need to clean the mask up. But we have a lot of the detail in the hair has been retained over here and over here on the right hand side. We need to fix obviously the top as well in here. So let's go ahead now and work on the mask. We're on the mask selection. Notice how there's a little white line around that. That means that the mask is selected. Hold the Alt key down and click on the mask. That loads just the mask into your workspace. We can now see that our nice fine hairs have been retained. That's great. A little bit down here we have this major one there. A little bit up here. So we've actually managed to retain those hairs. What we need to do now is we need to have white all inside of here, including inside of our whole top, and black outside. We'll just kind of clean it up a little bit on the fast side first here. I have white selected. Let's grab a paintbrush. And it's 83 pixels right now. That's fine. It's kind of a soft edge. Hardness of 91. A little bit of a soft edge to that. And just paint white right onto the layer mask like that. That will make those parts opaque. The hair in here doesn't matter because that's actually in the figure. That's fine. Don't go clear to the edge with this. Just come out kind of close to the edge, but not clear against the edge. We'll take care of that edge in just a bit. And I'll just work through and get most of this cleaned up. And then come down kind of close to that edge, but not quite onto the edge. And there we go. Let's see how that looks so far. It's a little bit right in there. Just click on the image side again. We're back to the image. Okay, her face is now nice and opaque. That's correct. Let's go back to the layer mask side, Alt key and click, and loads that back in again. Now you want black out here. So let's switch our colors to black. Then you can just paint this in black. Again, don't go clear to the edge. We'll save that for last. But paint everything else in so the mask is basically done at this point aside from just our little bit of cleanup in there. Now the cleanup, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. And I'll show you a couple of different options in here and you can choose whatever is best for your particular picture that you're working on. And take your time on the next part of this. That's the most critical and that's getting that edge nice and clean and nice and accurate. That's where it's gonna really count. Okay, just about done with our cleanup. Fix the bottom in there. There we go. Okay, now let's do the hair first in here. This is the most critical part. This is simply putting an edge in here and pinning against that edge. That's easy. So let's do the hard part first. Just zoom in a little bit and that's our hair. Now I want to have the hair nice and bright. It looks okay up here. Right here, here's the problem area. Have that little light background in there. We're kind of losing the hair. Now for this, Go over here, we have a couple of tools, the Dodge tool and the Burn tool. Now I have the Dodge tool set up here on highlights, right there. Exposure at 50%. And I have the Burn tool set for shadows and an exposure of 25%. What that allows me to do is I can darken the shadows down with the Burn tool. And I can lighten the highlights up, lighten the hairs up with the Dodge tool. So let's go to the Burn tool. Now let's come in here. You can see now how it actually darkens that down. If I go over the hair a little bit, like that, it doesn't really touch the hair because the hair is a highlight. So I can now darken down those edges in here and get my background to black, but still retain the hair. Now the hard part's right there. I have to kind of go back and forth on this. So let's switch over to the Dodge tool. Do a little bit with the dodge tool that'll lighten your highlights up, lightens the hair up a little bit there. Let's go back to the burn tool and come inside just a bit and darken that down. And then back to the dodge tool a little bit. There we go. 
and back to the burn tool again. Kind of work back and forth. Now you won't be able to keep all of your real fine hairs. But this will get you awfully close. That looks fine. Looks like a little bit right in here needs to be fixed. That's okay. A little bit of thin hairs up here. Again, we can't keep all of those thin hairs. There's no way to do that. But we can get really close on that with this technique. Just darkening down the dark parts and then we'll go back and with the dodge tool lighten them up a little bit. That'll help retain those hairs. And that's the hardest part of this kind of masking is keeping those little wispy hairs in there. But that's all there is to it. Just going back and forth with these two tools you can darken down the dark parts and lighten up the light parts and that will take care of those real fine wispy hairs. And this will be bit better than any other technique you can possibly use to retain these things. But it's just a little bit of work to do it, but well worth it for your final outcome. Okay, now here, notice how it's getting a little bit soft focus right there. That makes it a little bit more difficult. So just do the best job you can. If it's too soft focus, just leave a little bit of a softness on the edge and you'll be okay. You may have to go back and take out some of that actually. Those are the areas that might give you a little bit of that that white highlight showing up kind of a halo effect. And you can also do the same dodge and burn technique on the final image. As long as you understand the process, you can then go back and forth on that. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We've retained a lot of our hairs up in there. That needs some cleaning. Let's just go back here to our white paintbrush and we'll get that right in there. That's perfect. And look at the top, looks good. That side all looks fine. Real nice hair retention right in there. Look at all those little thin hairs. We saved all of that. Now for the last bits, and that is the sleeve on the left side and the right side. We'll just do that real easy here. You can freehand this if you want to, or if you're a little bit of a chicken like I am sometimes, just make a selection right along that edge, and then use that selection to paint in your black and your white. So I'll just make a selection here. This just guarantees that I don't mess anything up. Now keep in mind we are still inside of the layer mask when we're doing this. We're using the selection tool inside of the layer mask. If I go clear to the bottom it will auto scroll as you can see down there. Okay, I'll take this outside here a little bit in the back of my beginning point. So that's selected. Let's switch our tools to the black tool, paintbrush, and then let's just paint in right against that edge. That's fine. Let's now invert that selection, inverse, go to white, and then come in and paint in the white side. Now the brush has just a little bit of a softness on the edge. So I have about 93% on that. So I'm just going to invert here again. And black, I want to have the, the softness coming inside. Notice how you get a little bit of that edge, that soft edge, goes past your selection. Right there, see the little soft edge there? The edge, actually the softness, if you have a feathering on your brush, it will go past your selection just a little bit. So in this case, I want that to be going inside of the white area and not into the black area. If it goes into the black, that'll give you a halo. If it goes into the white, that's just fine. Okay, that's fine. A little bit right here, I can just freehand that. Let's deselect, grab my brush and white and I'll just freehand right there. There we go. Looks good. Okay, let's go over to the right hand side. Same trick. Right down here. Not much to do on this side. I think we'll zoom in just one touch and grab the marquee tool here. We're using the polygonal lasso tool for this actually. And just come straight down there we go, and let's do the outside, back to our beginning spot, grab black, invert our colors, there's black, and just come in and paint it in like that, and I think that is great there, okay, let's invert our selection, change to white, paint that, now again I want to have the little soft edge there on the other direction. So let's switch our colors 
and let's switch our selection to that side again and come in so that it kind of comes in to the mat a little bit instead of out of it. Okay, deselect a little bit of freehand, I think, right in here. I'm just going to freehand that and then we'll be okay. Right there and invert that a little bit right there. And that should do it. It's fit on screen. It's our nice mask. Take a look around, see if there's anything else you missed. I have a spot right there I want to fix. So I'll grab the paintbrush and I'll just hit that one like that. There we go. And then let's switch back to the image by clicking on the image side. There we go. And there's our nice clean mask behind. I now have removed that background. We've you know changed the background in here just using the channels as our basic adjustment and then cleaning up the layer mask as the second step on that. Let's now improve our picture by actually changing our background to something else. Now that it's clean, we can do that. I have another picture up here. I'll just open this one up. Just a picture of some horses. There we go. There's our horse picture. Let's now float this out just like that. I'll grab the background, drag it over here. There we are. Let's get rid of that file. Now it's not an exact fit, but we'll just adjust that. So I'll bring it up here. And then using the Control T keyboard shortcut to bring up the control handles on this. There we are. I'll hold down the Shift key and this extend this out so it goes clear to the bottom of our picture. That's good. Choose the check mark. It's set in place. Drag it underneath our image. There we are. Looks pretty good. Now it's too sharp for a real nice image. As you recall, the image here had a nice soft background. We'll go ahead and we'll mimic that on this image by going up to Filter, come down to Blur, and we'll use a Gaussian Blur. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and do one, another little safety feature at this point. Let's convert this layer for Smart Filters. Click on that. Choose OK. This becomes a Smart Object and that allows us to go back and make changes on that filter easily if we want to. Okay, so filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let that come up and there we go. So here it is with no blur on it. And then just bring the blur up a little bit until you begin to stop paying attention to the background and begin paying attention to the foreground. Maybe somewhere around in here, 8 pixels on this particular image. It'll depend upon your picture and on your foreground image. But there we go. There's our nice picture. Now, you can, at this point, look for any little highlights. We should be okay on this image. It's a little bit in here, but that actually allows the hair to show better. So I'll leave that. A little bit along this edge in here, maybe. Now, that could be lighting from the outside, but we can go ahead. We can darken that down. We can do that just by going back over here. Click on the layer mask side, go back to the burn tool. Again, that's right there. Burn tool, still set on shadows, and then just do that right along that edge. And that will darken down that edge of the layer mask and get rid of that little bit of a light edge on there. That should solve everything. So there we go. There is how to use the channels to make a layer mask to remove the background and replace it with a different background. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.